Hey guys, what's going on? It is Castle the Perfect T today, bringing you a live commentated Wi-Fi battle versus my boy. Nah, I just I never say that, so I'm just gonna say Culination Media, Culination Fits, and um, yeah, today I'm gonna be battling him. And uh, before I get started, I would like to say, guys, thank you very much for all the support. Once again, Team Perfect is doing absolutely fantastic. We hit the 6.1k subscribers. You guys are amazing. Keep up the amazing work, and I'll keep up the videos that you guys enjoy so much. So, I'm going to be making a picture real quick of my opponent's team. Because that's what I do. And um, the screen is blurry. There it goes. I got my picture, and now I'm ready to battle him. And uh, this is gonna be a very interesting battle. Unfortunately, though, I get to see something that I really did not did not want to see, and that was the Talon Flame. I absolutely detest that Pokemon. I absolutely hate it. And uh, especially now that I don't really have a counter for it. Oh my God, this is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. So, anyways, um, I need to pick up my team right now. Taking a little bit look uh, at his team, I would say that um, he would lead off with Smeargle. Uh, and he would try to set up everything, so I'd say that, you know, leading off with Fictini would be the perfect, like, um, lead. Uh, because I have the taunt on this guy, not to mention that I can go for the free Fikreate and absolutely destroy whatever is in my path. Uh, especially that Skarmory is gonna is gonna be in for a big surprise, because Fikreate is uh, base 180, and uh, that, th that attack does so much damage, and it is so powerful, but... We'll find out very soon right now, so the battle is gonna be starting right now, and I'm very, 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 um, you know, curious as to how good this player actually is, because I'm a subscriber, and I know he's pretty good, but I've never battled him before, so I have no idea what he's actually going to uh, be doing in this battle. I think he predicts pretty well, so I am just going to start off the battle here with 15. He's gonna lead up with Chandler, and uh, right off the bat, I think that this thing is choice carved, because most of them are. And uh, that's gonna be the case since Fictini is uh, psychic type. He it would only make sense if he goes for the Shadow Ball. So I'm just gonna switch out into um, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm gonna switch out into Persian here, predicting the Shadow Ball. I know it's really early to start predicting, but um, I really don't have any other choice here. I don't want to stay in on a Shadow Ball and lose Fictini right off the bat. I'd rather lose Persian. Oh, he goes for the Fire Bless. He predicts the switch. Right off the bat, very first, I should have gone um, onto um, Melodic, but um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, and it's okay though, it's okay. Because now that I know that he's pretty much, you know, locked into Fire Blast, uh, I am going to sit, switch one more time and I'm gonna go out into Melodic. He might just predict the same switch and uh, switch himself, but I don't think he's gonna do that. He's gonna go for another Fire Blast, that's what I'm thinking. And uh, in comes my Lodic. He's gonna go for another Fire Blast, just like I predicted. And uh, I'm just gonna be able to take this like a champ, I believe. I believe I can take those goddamn Fire Blasts coming from the shadow. I cannot sing, I'm sorry. I just. I, I sound terrible. Alright, so. He is absolutely not staying in here, so. I need to start predicting right now. A very good switch in into my Lodic, looking at his team, would be. Ampharos, but if it's going to be Ampharos, I mean it could it could it could be uh, Skarmory at the same time because Skarmory also loves to set up things. Uh, it could be basically anything at this point. I mean, I'm just gonna go for an Ice Beam. I'm gonna go for an Ice Beam, predicting the switch into Ampharos, and uh, hopefully I get a freeze or something. That might just work out. Oh yeah, I completely forgot that Amphor is not part Dragon. It is part Dragon after it Mega Evolves. Alright, so that was a really bad move on my part. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it was part Dragon right immediately. Um, okay. Gonna get a little bit of Leftovers Recovery. He might just go for the Mega Evolution. Um, so, I don't know what to do. And uh, the Cotton Guard is something that I'm so scared of. It is really a pain in the ass. Alright, so I'm not sure if he's gonna Mega Evolve because he saw that I'm just using Ice Beam and he most likely will start setting up with the Cotton Guard on my Melodic because he can do so. Um, Alright. Alright, you know what? I'm actually gonna switch out into Nidoking. 
uh, predicting the electro type attack and um, even if he goes for the cotton guard at this point I'm, I'm safe because I'm especially orientated Nido King and I can do, you know do some damage to this thing but he goes for the focus blast instead of the uh, electro type attack and that is actually resisted by Nido King which is absolutely fantastic now I need to be careful because there is two flying type Pokemon on this team uh, so I cannot go for earth power uh, that would be atrocious and uh, I think that going for uh, I'm going to go for the sludge bomb I think I'm actually yeah I'm just gonna go for a sludge bomb do as much damage as I possibly can and uh, see where it actually gets me I don't think he's gonna switch out into Skarmory especially because uh, I do run with uh, I do run the fire blast on this guy but you see he's gonna mega evolve now holy shit alright so fair enough Fair enough, Sludge Bomb is absolutely going to do a little bit of damage, I'm very sure about that. It's not really going to do that much, but still it's going to do a decent amount. Alright, it does quite a lot of damage, wow, I'm surprised. Especially after the boost that uh, Mega Amphro gets after the uh, Mega Blue. She's going to take me out with the Dragon Pools. Alright, man, um, you're playing with fire right now. Or I am playing with fire, I should say. Um, Alright. I am going to go out into what I believe is going to be Torterra. No, I'm not going to go out into Torterra because the thing is, is I really need to be careful because that um, that um, that bird, man, that bird, it's it's too powerful. Um, so I'm guessing I should go out into. I need to get the rocks up. That's absolutely certain. And uh, he's got a lot of special attackers. The only physical attacker that he has on his team that could be called his physical attacker is going to be the Talon Flame, and I believe the Skarmory also has access to Brave Bird. So, um, wow, decisions, decisions are so hard to make right now. Um, I I believe that I should just go out into Fictini and go for the Sand Headbutt, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out into Fictini here and just you know just go for the Sand Headbutt and do as much damage as I possibly can. Sand Headbutt is actually. I believe 100% accuracy because of the uh, victory star, the ability of uh, Fictini, and uh, that would most likely, you know, do the job, get the job done. Actually, I don't think that the uh, Mega Amphorus is gonna be uh, bulky enough to survive that, especially because I think that I'm running Life Orb on this Fictini, and uh, it's gonna be doing a lot of damage. And I also have the slight chance of getting a flinch. I do take him out, and his Mega Evolution is out of the game already, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, I believe that the next Pokemon that's going to be coming in is going to be Talonflame. And it would make sense because I think that a Brave Bird from this range would kill me. And uh, that's scary. That is very scary. And the thing is, I would like to set up the Stealth Rocks before the Talonflames actually comes out. But I don't have the opportunity to do so just yet. And I have to be careful because that Smeargle can also set up Sticky Web, Stealth Rocks and stuff like that. Um, I have a Defogger on my team which is going to be my Jamega, but... Uh, uh, it is not really, it's not something that I can use at this point. Alright, so it's gonna bring out this thing. And, um, you know, Fictini does not have the worst, the worst, um, defense in the world. So, something is really tempting me to just go for the Fusion Bolt and do as much damage. Oh, completely obliterate this Fiery Bird. And I'm, act I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna go for the Fusion Bolt and uh, hopefully I also... I am faster, I don't know what it goes for, I don't know what it goes for, but the Fusion Bolt is going to... Oh my god, he leaves! He leaves! Oh, are you serious? And he goes for the U-turn. Right now I absolutely need to get the Rocks up because... If I get the Rocks up right now, the Talon Flame is gonna be dying. And oh my god, I'm so surprised! I know it's not Stab, but holy shit, man! Talon Flame, what are you doing? What are you doing? That that was just really, really scary. Now in comes the Chandler again, and um, I'm thinking, he's Joy Scarf, I'm just gonna switch uh, back into my logic. I'm really not gonna risk anything, and he might just double switch out into his Talon Flame. I don't really care about that because I know that I can take a Brave Bird. Um, and quite frankly, he's Miracle, that's what I'm most afraid of at this point. Alright, I'm just gonna go for the Shadow Ball, which is fine. I'm uh, still not gonna do that much damage considering the fact that this Milotic is actually trained in special defense a little bit. Not fully trained in special defense, but uh, it's got some EVs on it. So, right. I am just going to go for the Scald, and um, I think that he's going to switch out into his, um, into his Miracle. 
because he wants to set up. And I think that Smurgo has a focus as, but I mean, I can get the burn, and that would be totally bad news for him. So I'm guessing that Alakazam is going to be switching, because even Skarmory is not a good switch in here. So he's really in a bad situation. Alakazam is absolutely going to be a switch. I knew that, uh, and it makes sense in a way. So I'm just gonna go for the Scald here and do as much damage as I possibly can. I just hope that this Alakazam does not have recover because that would be really, really bad. And I am happy that this Alakazam is not going, not, not going to be Mega Evolving on me right now uh, because he already Mega Evolved his Ampharos. Uh, and I'm kind of fearing the Energy Ball at this point. And uh, right, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna stay in because, quite frankly, this is this is my specially defensive wall. So I guess that I should just, I should just go for another skull. He's gonna go for the Energy Ball, just like I predicted. Um, it's gonna do a lot of the. Whoa, that does quite a lot of the. Oh my God, are you serious? That does too much damage. Uh, the skull is gonna hit him again, and I don't get the burn, unfortunately. But um, I don't think that matters. Well, it might matter, uh, but um, it's okay. Um, alright. I think that I need to sacrifice something. Uh, the problem is... <coughs> I just discovered that my entire team does not have priority. Which is... It is... That's bad, dude. That is so bad. How did I not... Wow, that's really stupid. And I'm actually going to go ahead and... Um, double check Cerebi.net because I don't remember just how fast Persian is. I think that Persian is really fast, I know that. But I don't think that it's go he, he's going to be able to outspeed the Alakazam, that's the problem. I don't have anything. Uh, 361, base 115, uh, meaning that I'm slower than Alakazam. Meaning that, mean that, that I am in a world of trouble right now. Um, right, um, I, I'm, I'm actually thinking, uh, I think that this if this Alakazam runs Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Dazzling Gleam, like a four super offensive, hyper offensive Alakazam, I mean, I, I'm done. I, I don't think that I, I'll be able to do anything else. Oh my god. This is so bad, though. Uh, let me just double check his team again. So I need to be sure. Alright, so he's got... Okay. The problem is I need my Lodic. I need my Lodic so badly for that Chandler, but I, I am so low on HP right now that it actually doesn't matter. So, I am guessing that I'm just gonna let my Lotic die in a way. Yeah, I'm just gonna get let my Lotic die here because really I don't have any use for it. He's gonna go for the Psycho Shocky, predicting the possible switch. But um, that's fine, it's gonna take me out anyway. So he's got Energy Ball and Psycho Shock. So far, so good. Um, I would absolutely, without hesitating, go out into my Fictini. Normally, I would do that, but um, the thing is, if, if that guy has Shadow Ball, there is no way. There is just no way. So I'm actually going to go out into Torterra. I'm going to go out into Torterra. And I need to set up the Stealth Rocks because I don't want to deal with a Talon Flame. There is no way I want to deal with that. Alright, so Stealth Rocks is what's going to be... Uh, going on right now, uh, he's absolutely going to switch out into the Talonflame, maybe now he might go for a Roost, which would make sense, then I'll just go for the Earthquake. So depends on what he does now, it really depends on what he does now, how this battle is actually going to go, because he has the upper hand and somebody is just sending, sending me a message through Skype, so I'll just mute that. And uh, yeah, this is actually really, really, really scary. That Alakazam, dude. Alright, so it's gonna switch out into Titania, which is gonna be the Skarmory. And um, that's fine, actually. That's absolutely fine. I got my rocks up, so I don't have to worry about... Okay, so it doesn't have a Rapid Spinner on his team, I think. Um, so he is going to be setting up something. And... Um, right. Uh, maybe Fictini... Or Persia, Persian. Um, I'm thinking if I bring out Persian, and then yeah, I'm gonna bring out Persian right now. I have the shock wave on this guy, and uh, as you guys remember from my last battle, my Persian is a specially orientated attacking uh, cat, and it does damage. And it is, you know, <laughs> it's funny because the thing is um, actually shiny, and you don't notice the difference. 
Uh, the only difference is I think the ears, they are pink or something, and I think that they are normally red. No, they aren't just normally the same color as its body, so that's like the only difference. Uh, okay, so he's gonna set up the spikes, and I am going to go for the shockwave. I wanna deal some super effective damage against this thing. Possibly, you know, take him out at some point. Alright, so that does sufficient damage to the point where I'm really, really happy about the damage. And if you roar me out into Fictini right now, you're gonna be... Oh my god, are you serious? Why are you? Why? Damn it. Why? Why Torterra? Couldn't you choose something else, man? Come on. Alright, so... I am going to set up the lead seed. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't think that he's gonna go for the roost because there is uh, really nothing that I can do with Torterra at this point. Against that Skarmory. Alright, there goes the lead seed. And uh, he's gonna go for the roar. Okay, so he's, he's gonna roar me out again, which is good. Alright, so it's gonna be Jam Mega this time. The shiny Jam Mega. Alright, now we're talking. It's really unfortunate because I don't have speed boost on this guy. So, I have Tinted Lens. And that's gonna come to bite me in the ass, really. Uh, because I cannot outspeed the Alakazam. And I'm just gonna go for the bug buzz because Tinted Lens actually boosts my specially at uh, not not super effective not super effective attacks are boosted by Tinted Lens, and I just don't know how much. I'm just gonna double check so I can give you guys the right information because of course that's what you want to get. Jung Mega, all right, so there it is. Boop. Uh, all right, so Tinted Lens, the power of not super effective move is doubled so it's actually 200% damage a 200% damage output that's amazing so I'm just gonna go for the bug boss here and that should be sufficient to take down that thing and uh, he will be switching out into Chandler oh no he's gonna be switching out into this thing which is gonna die to a stealth rocks which is good and um, I think that he's gonna be bringing out the Alakazam and if that's going to be the case I'm not sure if Psychic will kill me um, in one hit I mean, he doesn't have Psyche, he has Psycho Shock, so I'll be definitely sure to survive that. But, he's gonna bring out Chandler. <laughs> so, wow. Okay, so he's gonna bring out this thing. Okay. Alright, so, I have, I can go for the Air Slash and, you know, fish for the, um, fish for the flinch. But, if I don't get it... Alright, you know, that's okay. Okay, no, wait. He's gonna put something to sleep, right? Uh, he's gonna put something to sleep. And I absolutely don't want Jamega to be put to sleep, really. I am so weak to fire. I I'm actually weak to a freaking... Yeah, I'm actually weak to fire. That's what it is. Um, I cannot think straight right now, so I guess that... My best bet would be like going for the air slash and fish for the flinch. Hopefully I'll get it. If not, then um, he'll put the jump mega to sleep, I guess. There is not much that I can do about it. Air slash is gonna bring him down. And he's actually going to kill. Okay, so he doesn't have the focus sash on the Smirgle. That's weird. That's absolutely weird. Uh, because most Smirgles that I have faced so far in this sixth generation, they all have focus sash. So that is th that's weird though. That, that's really weird. All right, and uh, it's it's quite obvious what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna switch out into Persian. I'm gonna let Persian die uh, because the entry has its spikes. Um, and I want to see what the Chandler is gonna lock himself into because if, if if it's gonna be Shadow Ball, then I am there is no way that I'm actually going to you know send out Fictini. I'm gonna send out uh, Torterra. The, just depending on what he's gonna do is uh, is what I'm gonna do next. So if he goes for the Shadow Ball, then I'll be going out into Zotera. If he goes for the Fire Blast, then I'll be going out into Fictini. So he's got three Pokemons left. Just like I... No, wait. Yeah, just like I do. Because Persian is actually dead. And uh, he's got two hella speedy Pokemons. Alright, in comes Persian. And the thing is gonna die to the Spikes. And um, what is he going to do? I wanna see. What are you going to do? He's gonna go for the Shadow Ball, okay. You are going to go for the Shadow Ball, that's good. I don't care about that. I'm just gonna go out into Torterra. <laughs> and I'm going to take you out with an Earthquake. That's what I'm gonna do, though. 
Um, I know the possible switch to Skarmory is real, uh, but if I'll be honest with you, I will regret it if he goes for the Shadow Ball and he stays in and then kills me. So I'm just gonna go for the safe Earthquake. He might just over predict and stay in just like I said, but the safe, the safest switch or the safest move at this point would be switching out into Skarmory, avoiding the uh, Earthquake damage. Uh, yeah, he's gonna do that. Alright, so that's cool. That's cool. I don't want to off-predict too much because I'm really in a bad situation. I don't want to off-predict to the point where I'll be sorry of the moves that I'll make. So, alright. So I'm going to be... I'm going to set up the lead seed, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to set up the lead seed. And, uh... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, really. There is nothing else that I can do. Alright, so there goes the lead seed. And he's going to set up more spikes okay he's gonna set up more spikes I really feel sorry for myself because I didn't bring any priority and usually I bring priority so really really bad play on my part really really bad and uh, but right now I'm gonna be receiving uh, you know recovery from the leftovers and the lead seed at the same time so I'll be recovering quite a bit of damage um, and I'm guessing that at some point he will go for the roost so I might just go for an earthquake here um, or he will just go for the roar and if that's going to be the case then whatever comes in whatever I have left will be able to finish off this Skarmory yeah I'm sure of that so I'm just gonna go for the earthquake here he might just go for the roost alright so he's gonna go for more spikes I should have gone for the wood hammer then but it's okay it's okay I'm not too worried about it he won't be able to go for um, what is it called? He won't be able to go for the the roost if he continues like this, uh, because I'm just gonna be spamming earthquakes. He might just roar me out right now, and the entry hazards damage will be incredible. So I need to think straight. All right, so the spikes do not affect Jamega, so if he roars me out into Jamega, he's in a world of trouble. Uh, so I'm actually going to continue going for the Earthquake. It might sound like a really stupid play, but I really don't want this thing roosting on me. Really, I don't. He's gonna roost now. That is perfect. I'm going to hit him with an Earthquake, just like I... Oh my god, that is so sweet. Uh, but still, Skarmory is really, really sturdy, so he, he might just take this Earthquake like a monster. And he doesn't, which is great. Alright, sweet. So he's down to red health and he's gonna recover a little bit of HP because of the leftovers. But then the lead seed is gonna negate that. And uh, yeah, I'm actually just gonna go for another Earthquake, really. I'm gonna go for another Earthquake because I will not allow him to go for the Roost. There is no way I'm gonna do that. He might just go for the Brave Bird right now. Or he might just whirlwind me away, or I mean roar me away. Uh, it just depends. It doesn't really matter because at this point Torterra is walling the living crap out of his Skarmory. And if he goes for the Brave Bird, though, he's gonna kill himself. So, what is it going to be? I think that I lost this game anyway, because that like Sam is way too fast to handle. And uh, the Chandelure is carved, so it's actually really fast, too. He's gonna go for the Brave Bird anyway. Alright, so, good, good, good for you, sir. He's gonna kill himself. And uh, that's a dead Skarmory. Alright, I'm, I'm just curious what he's gonna bring out now, because if he brings out the uh, Chandelier and he goes for the Fire Blessing, that misses, he will be sorry for the rest of his life. But then, if he goes for the Shadow Ball, I think that's gonna kill me anyway, too. Uh, I don't think that I have uh, iffy investments in the Special Defense side of this Torterra, so I'll be dying anyway. Or he might just bring out the Alakazam, it really depends, he only has two Pokemon left, two specially orientated Pokemon and I really really feel bad that I let my mel melodic die just like that really bad play on my part but in comes the chandelier and uh, mm, right the spikes do not affect Jamega because I think Jamega is flying type and uh, Jamega can pretty much I think counteract that Alakazam pretty well I don't think that Alakazam can kill me because he doesn't have psychic and psychic is his only stab move so he will be attacking me on the physical side because Psyshock deals for physical damage. So if he goes for the Shadow Ball and I live through it, he's dead. 
And uh, if he goes for Fire Blast and he misses, he's dead. So, all I can do right now is just go for the Earthquake. I'm just gonna go for the Earthquake. He's gonna go for the Shadow Ball. I'm not sure if that's gonna kill. It is not going to kill. I'm gonna be able to get the Earthquake off, which is so sweet. This is amazing, Torterra. You're a monster. You just took care of his Skarmory, did not allow him to roost, and then you just take that Shadow Ball from the Chandelier like a beast and take him down with an Earthquake. Wow. Torterra MVP fucking player for this game. Alright. Sweet. So he's got only one Pokemon left. That's gonna be Alakazam. Now, Alakazam, what are you gonna do, bro? Uh, he's gonna kill me anyway. So the only possible way that I can win this match, because he's, he obviously outspeeds my... Um, Victini, and because of the entry hazards, those spikes, I will be at a low enough uh, amount of HP where he can basically kill me with whatever. So it's actually all, it all depends on Jamega, really. So I'm just gonna go for the Earthquake here. And it's gonna take me out with a side shot, which is cool. <coughs> I'm actually going to bring out Victini after this. And I'm just gonna confirm the Shadow Ball, I guess. Uh, Alright, Victini, it's your turn. I mean, usually people would go out into Jamega at this point, just to speed up the battle, but I just want to see what else this guy has. I mean, I've seen Shy Shock and I've seen Energy Ball, so I don't I don't know what else he has. I'm just going to go for the Fikriate, though. He's going to go for the Shadow Ball. Okay, so it's it's actually a hyper-offensive for Lakasem, and he does not have, like, the Life Orb, so, or maybe he has the Life Orb and has Magic Guard at the same time. I think that's a good combination, just like uh, the Sheer Force and uh, Life Orb combination on uh, Nidoking. So the game is actually down to one versus one. Spikes is not going to hurt um, Jamega. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put up your bets here because it is Jamega versus Alakazam. If Jamega is able to live through a Shadow Ball or whatever else he's gonna use against me, I will win this battle. If not, which could also be the case, he can also get a critical hit or something like that, then the game is his. Whatever the case, before I click the move to finish off this battle, thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to click the like button down there because it really tremendously helps out the channel grow. And um, I love you guys so much. You guys are amazing, really. So let's go ahead and click on Bug Bus. I'm gonna go for the Bug Bus here. And uh, he's gonna go for the Psycho Shock. That is, like I said, gonna deal physical damage. And Jamega is going to live, he's going to live, he is going to live, and down goes the Alakazam, it's actually a 1 to 0 game, this is, this, I was so close man, really really good game bro, thank you so much for this match Cooly Nation, you guys pretty much make sure to check him out, the link will be down in the description, and I'm absolutely safe in this game in case something happens to the live recording. Uh, that I'm doing right now. So once again guys if you want to go ahead and check him out link will be down in the description He puts on some amazing Wi-Fi battles as well. He's a Wi-Fi battle Battler himself of course with a YouTube channel. I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check him out Other than that guys remember to like up this video if you enjoyed it if we get to 60 likes I'll do another live commentated Wi-Fi battle the day right after this uh, So without further ado guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace